You know the AP poll, it's that top 25 ranking that comes out every Monday afternoon so fans can take a break from work or class to complain about their team's placement online. But are you familiar with how the rankings are calculated? Here's a primer in case you're not. Every weekend, a national panel of college basketball writers, usually about 60, submit their individual top 25 rankings. Each individual ballot is scored so that each team gets an amount of points inverse to their ranking. That is, the number one team gets 25 points, the number two team gets 24 points, and so on and so forth, all the way down to one point for the number 25 team. The point values for each team are summed up across all 60 or so ballots, and there you go. If you place in the top 25 in points, you're ranked. If you get some points, but not enough to crack the top 25, you're put in the Others Receiving Votes section. And if you don't get any points, well, that's just a skill issue. This has been done almost every week of every college basketball season for decades. Since the Associated Press released their first poll on January 18, 1949, they've published one almost every week of every regular season, every preseason since 1961, and after the NCAA tournaments in 1974 and 1975. That's 1,240 polls overall, spanning a time period that accounts for most of the history of college basketball as a major sport. So let's ask the AP poll. Who's the best program in history? Is it the team who's appeared in the most polls? That'd be Kentucky, who's appeared in 939, with North Carolina close second. Both of these teams have been ranked in over 75% of AP polls all time. What about the team who's held down the top spot the longest? That's Duke, who's been number one for 145 weeks. Just think, more than one out of every nine AP polls has had Duke at number one. Unfortunate. I had another idea. What if I measured every team's all-time performance in the AP poll the same way the AP measured every team's performance on a weekly basis? Take each of the 1240 weekly AP polls and score them like individual ballots to be compiled into a sort of all-time AP poll. This would require me to learn how to build a relational database from scratch, gather almost 75 years worth of polling data, and perform unique calculations with it to output the final table. You know. The exact kind of thing you end up doing when you're stuck inside for most of two years. Here's what I did. I took all 1240 AP polls and scored every team as described above. Number 1 gets 25 points, number 2 gets 24 points, etc. down to 1 point for number 25. But the poll hasn't always ranked 25 teams. It started out only ranking 20 teams and kept that format until 1989, except in most of the 1960s when it dropped even further to just 10 teams. Polls from this era were still scored in the same way, with the number one team getting 25 points, but I cut off the decline in scoring at the bottom of the table. So where a 25 team poll would have number 20 getting 6 points and every team below it continuing the drop down to 1 at the bottom, a 20 team poll would have number 20 getting 6 points and then just end. I did this because assigning different scores to teams with the same rank in different eras didn't really make any sense. Finally, if multiple teams were tied for the same ranking on a poll, I gave all of them the same score and skipped the point values immediately below them. The final table includes each school's rank, their total score, the number of weeks they've spent at number one, and the number of weeks they've spent in the poll overall. These last two are titled first place votes and ballots, respectively, to better simulate the AP poll. And that's all there is to it. The results looked like this.
If you've seen this before, it's probably because I wrote about it on Reddit when I originally finished it last fall. I won't completely rehash that post here, but I do want to run through a few things. First, the top of the poll. It looks pretty much like how you'd expect it. Blue Bloods, New Bloods, True Bloods, and whatever you call Maryland. Since Purdue finally reached number one for one week this year, the Terps are the only team in the top 25 to have never sat atop the poll. Also, in true Big Ten fashion, the conference is tied for the most teams in the top 25, but no one's higher than number 8. I want to give special mention to UCLA. They're second in weeks at number 1 thanks to John Wooden's mega dynasty, but a clear fifth in both total points and overall weeks on the poll. This dichotomy has led some scholars to deduce that UCLA isn't a blue blood. Are they correct? Yes. As you scroll down, you get a mix of constantly mediocre power conference teams and mid-majors who've left craters of varying depths. Gonzaga's is the deepest, having just entered the top 25 this year after more than two straight decades of dominance, but you can also see the marks of Bill Russell's San Francisco, John Calipari's UMass, One Seed 2004 St. Joseph's, and a whole bunch of other forgotten juggernauts. Near number 100, we start to find teams that don't even play Division I basketball anymore. Nine of them in all. Some of them never played D1 ball. When the poll first started, divisions didn't exist, so every team in the NCAA played under the same umbrella. The NCAA initially split into two divisions in 1956 precisely because of how unbalanced this was in college basketball, but before that happened, a few teams managed to convince a panel of sports writers that they were one of the top 20 teams in the country. Last but not least, the bottom of the poll. 13 teams have been ranked exactly once, including Pepperdine. Hey buddy, how you doing? The funniest to me is Army. Back in 1970, Bob Knight's squad was unranked in the preseason, then jumped all the way up to number 14 in the first poll of the regular season before going on a losing streak and getting knocked off the poll literally forever. That one week gave them 12 points, enough to put them ahead of some teams ranked for two, three, or even five weeks. At the very bottom, we've got Old Dominion. In 2015, they nearly aced a decently tough non-conference slate and rode that momentum to a number 25 ranking in early January. Then, they immediately lost a game they should have won and got banished from the poll forever. One measly point. But that's more than a lot of other teams can say. This past season, there were 358 D1 teams. Discounting the 9 non-D1 schools on the all-time poll, 195 teams have been ranked at least once, which means 163 haven't. These schools at the bottom are far from failures. They're simply the worst of the best. Everyone on this poll is the best. In fact, circling back to my original question of who's the best program in history, I think this poll displays the hierarchy in college basketball better than anything else I've ever seen. Especially near the top. Look at this list. I'd be hard-pressed to argue against this as an all-time program ranking. Maybe you give the Yukons of the world more love for winning more titles, maybe you rate Gonzaga a little higher than 25th on modern dominance, but otherwise it looks pretty solid. In any case, I hope you found this useful or at least somehow interesting. I put a ton of time and effort into it, and I plan to continue that as more polls get released, just like I did this past season. If you'd like to support my college basketball content and research, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my Patreon for as low as $3 a video. You can also subscribe for free to The Low Major, a Substack newsletter I run with my friends where we write about college basketball and a whole lot more. Links to both of these, as well as the full all-time poll, are in the description. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there!